Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Aging Experts. I am Barbara Ellison, and I am a transformational life trainer because I believe that each and every one of us deserves to lead a happy, healthy, financially free, abundant life, especially to make the rest of your life the best of your life. So just let's, we're going to talk about today things that we can do to have a great rest of your life. So, and how are you doing, Carol? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you, Barbara. It, her stuff is so amazing. And she is starting a new class at the middle of this month-ish. And uh, if any of y'all are interested in transforming your mindset, put it in the chat because I'm going to be taking this class. It is a great class. Uh, Positive so, intelligence. Yes. Yes. It, it, it is really, really cool. But today we have our friend Kalua on and, you know, it's Wednesday afternoon. I, I told him, I said, we should have done this for thoughtful Thursdays. And we could say, we have coffee with Kalua. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, and she'll have to tell you what her name, what her name means. It's really a cool name. Uh, Cause I asked her, well, how did you, get that name <laughs> so, anyway uh i have life by design and i help people make the second half of their life better than the first half of their life because we as women we are like fine line we get better and better and better with age and that's not to say anything against the men like you know good 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 glass of bourbon's always you know, something that, that people might want, uh, but they, they are definitely not fine wine like we are. We're a little, yes. softer, a little. <laughs> so anyway, so help us to help you make the second half of your life better. And to, to tell us a little bit more, Kalua is going to take us on a, on a little journey. We'll probably interrupt her 10 or 15 times to Bunny Trail here and there, but she's known us for a little bit and so she knows we do that so, <laughs> cool. tell us all about yourself and your name and what you do okay well I am Kalua, as you know um I'll start with the name because that was yeah that was quite the interesting topic for us both so I was named I say mainly by my mother she really liked this name and she liked what it meant specifically and what's funny is literally it means forgotten one which sounds very sad <laughs> but <laughs> but it's actually um it was actually an honorary name given to one person in the tribe and what it it meant to honor it was meant to honor people who had died before their time so that they never would be forgotten and so it's just interesting that um especially now as i get older and older, right? Moving into my wise woman years. I, 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 I sense that I sense the meaning of my name, you know, where I'm always just finding my voice, not only for myself, but for the people around me. And, uh, I, I think just so that, you know, nobody is being left behind. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So tell us about what you see a wise woman as uh you know I'm, I'm on the panhandle breast health board and we have wise women classes but that's talking about breast cancer and yeah. how you check yourself especially in your older years and stuff like that and you make sure that there's nothing going awry there uh you know that the girls are still happy so <laughs> anyway, uh, tell us what your version of wise women is what you're yeah, sure is. Yeah, well, you know, as women, we have three phases in our life. We have the maiden phase, right? And we're young and, you know, single and, you know, everybody loves a maiden, right? And then we have the mother phase. Basically, that is when we are giving. We're doing a lot of giving. We're mm -hmm. we're taking care. We're nurturing. Hopefully, we're nurturing ourselves in there, too. But we know we're doing a lot of caring for others. And then we transition into the wise woman years mm -hmm. it used to be called the crone right but that's kind of gotten a negative that's connotation awful. yeah you know and and it's all about taking back the power if you want to be a crone fine but I like wise woman because it doesn't have as much of the negative connotation but it's it's interesting to me 
I guess being that, well, of course, you know, the maiden always has the place in society, right? Because, you know, she's young, she's, she's fertile, she looks great, right? Vacious and then the and mother, charming. exactly, then the mother always has place because she's rearing the children. But in a patriarchal society, once a woman gets to the wise woman years, the way we see in our culture, hmm, her value seems to go down. And, and it's funny, like, I remember watching, um, Frank, uh, Frankie and Grace, Grace and Frank, whatever that show is, and where they were like had a whole episode of just being ignored, you know, like, can you hear me? Because they're older and nobody was even listening to them. And uh, I, yeah, I think that's so unfortunate, but I, I think it's on us to take it back, to just yes. own this phase and to not allow that cultural programming those messages to even phase us mm -hmm. and to know better because we are the wise woman this is the most powerful phase for women mm -hmm. is this wise woman phase because mm -hmm. you're not you're not in that phase of having to take care of everybody you're not right you're finally moving into you mm -hmm. into your power and because you're a woman, you know, that intuition is really good. We tend to be, you know, yin, water, right? <laughs> like that flow. So we have that intuition. We have that wisdom. We have so much to share. But right. we've got to make sure that we own that, that we remember that and not to let anyone take that away from us and to, you know, minimize us or, or belittle because it's just, it's a powerful, powerful time. And what's exciting to me is how I'm seeing so, so many people emphasize this time now, like menopause coaches and right, all of these things where, I mean, you used to be left alone. Like that was it. Go, you know, dig your hole. <laughs> well, and, and shuffled off to a nursing home. Yeah. Fit into yeah. a retirement village. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's just another name for a nursing home. They just yes. get up and play shuffleboard every day. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, we no longer, I mean, I look back to the Waltons when all the generations lived together and they valued mm -hmm. grandma and grandpa. And they, you know, yeah, grandma got a little cranky sometimes and she might get, get after you with the broom, but they still valued her opinion. They valued her knowledge. And, you know, when yeah. we think, stop and think, in the Bible, it says in Genesis 6, I have appointed unto man 120 years. Okay. And that means mankind. That doesn't mean men and not women. Okay. Um, but so there's 120 years. How many people live 120 years? Not yeah. many, because you have to give your, your body's made to do it. And the scientists even came out a couple of years ago going, you know, we were looking at the human body and the way it works, it's meant to last for 120 years, but we don't put the right oil and the gas in it to make the car run mm -hmm. well and to maintain. We, and we abuse engine. it. You know, there's that right. no pain, no gain mentality. Everything's yeah. got to be hard. We got to beat it up. We got to. Yeah. To well, and, and the mother years, the mother years, giving, 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 giving. Yes, I'll go yes. on three hours of sleep a night, but well, my kids will have the best costume at school. They'll go be in every yeah. sport. But, you know, yeah. that's something we have missed. And I think part of it is women allowing it to happen. But also, yes. if you stop and think and do the years, think how many of your grandmothers and your grandmothers and your great grandmothers would still be alive at 120 years. Mm -hmm. And if you look back, and this is something, you know, I've known for a few years, but not all my life, but you know, Moses, I mean, not Moses, <laughs> Noah and the flood. Okay. Okay. Noah and the flood. And, and I always saw Noah all by himself out there, you know, Noah and his sons building the ark and being alone and all the people throwing rotten tomatoes at him while they're building the ark. Kelly, give me this crazy. Huh? What? What'd you say, Barbara? Barbara. You telling said, him he's crazy. Yes. He they're yes. Tell, they were all telling he's crazy for building an ark. Am I, exactly. Okay. okay. But Methuselah's name, he's the oldest man ever living, 900 and something. Uh, it means 
died in the year of the flood or of the deluge. Methuselah was, I think, his grandfather or great-grandfather. See, all these people were still alive. All of his ancestors were still alive many generations up till then. So think of the wisdom and the knowledge and being able to bounce something off, you know, and we hear about old wives tales Mm -hmm. and old wives tales. When I was a kid, pretty much were remedies, Mm -hmm. uh, processes. There's not a lot that can't be healed on this planet. It says the healing of the lead, the nations is in the trees of leaves of the trees. And so it's out there. But yes. so much has been lost. And now people yes. are starting to do books. But that's one of the things that could. I mean, she makes her own skincare and stuff. So she, you know, she knows about some of these wise women or wives tales uh, that, you know, think, think about some of the wives tales you've heard, even, even to the point I have a, a, a girl that I follow that is cutting her persimmon seeds to mm-hmm. predict the weather and the weather predicting it has a knife, a fork and a spoon, never had heard of it before, but she's in the Appalachians. Okay. It's only good in your local, close yeah. to local area, but she has a following, you know, I think 4,000 people or something around the country and people are checking their persimmons and across the board this year is a spoon which means heavy snow. Ooh, yay. (laughs) Yeah, and we will be doing a show on what do you, this is something Barbara and I have had planned. We just haven't had time to to produce it. What do you do if the power goes out and it's cold? You know, we did the the hot one and we did the, how do you stay cool earlier this year? And what do you do if the power goes out, you know, when it's 109 degrees? Well, here in Texas, we had the snow apocalypse, and some people were without power for two weeks. Yes. And we're talking here in our part of Texas, we were having minus 10 and minus 15 degrees. And the same thing down in Dallas and Houston, they were at the, the about minus 10 degrees. The mm-hmm. houses down there are not built for it. And there were waterfalls out of people's indoor balconies, uh, wow. and frozen waterfalls that uh, when that happened. So we're going to do a a little show on how do you stay warm? Because, you know, I'm not going to say I'm an old wife, but I am not young as I was. But you know, I am a wife. I I do want to go back to that. And and just that, for instance, the old wives tale and think about every time, oh, that's just an old wives tale. And we're very dismissive of it. And it means nothing. Why? Why? Because this came from the women who knew something, right? They were, women tend to be very in tune with nature. Yes. And this is something that we need. And, you know, like you were saying earlier, not that it, we're dismissing the men because we as women, as we step into our power even more, the men get to step into their power even more. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and used to, I mean, I think a part of it, came when women started going to the hospital to have babies yeah. i mean if you look back that was a big shift that was I a big shift the because you, 50s yeah go ahead it was it, it was women taking care of women it was you know a lot of times women were the medicine women right they yes. they took care of they were the birthers the midwives yes. and that well, where you went if you were that sick power you know, yeah, we pulled that into the hospitals and made it sick care instead of a birthing ceremony. And we took that away from women, which mm-hmm. was very natural to them. Mm-hmm. And yes. again, disempowered. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, there were so many, and now there are, there are times and births that might do better in a hospital. One of, my, sure. one of my granddaughters was born in the car on the way to the hospital. Uh, <laughs> I mean, mom did it by herself. Dad was driving 70 miles an hour. Uh, but then the next one was over two months early and he was in, in NICU for, yeah. you know, some time. So, you know, there are times that, that a hospital would be necessary, but those times are so seldom. Yes. Uh, 
I mean, just, I can remember my, my oldest grandchild, the first time that she ever was put in intensive care. And I'm like, intensive care? Because to me, at my age, you go there right before you die. Right. I, I mean, that that's my, you know, my generation. It was a s- extreme thing. Well, when Keith had one of his heart attacks, they sent him home from intensive care. And I'm like, aren't you going to put him in a room first and watch him for a day or two? <laughs> This mm-hmm. is intensive care. They're, oh no, he'll be fine. And I'm like, then why is he in intensive care? And yeah. here they put my grandbaby in intensive care and she had an IV. Well, why not the pediatric floor? Yeah. You know, it, it it's like that it things have shifted so much. And it was that she was dehydrated. Now mm-hmm. for me. Now, I didn't know some of these things when my children were young, but for me, I mean, we've got coconut water, we've got other kind of, you know, water that, you know, spun water, um, where it's the different sides Mm -hmm. of the hydrogen, I'm drawing drawing a blank on the clustered water, you know, there's lots of different clusters of water that you can use that will go into the body better than the stuff you're drinking. And that, but I mean, I didn't know that when my kids were little, of course, we didn't run to the hospital very often, but when this grandbaby was, you know, if, if I had had care of that child, you know, we might would have tried some other things before Mm -hmm. IVs in the intensive care units. So it, it goes back to, like you said, I like wise women better than old wives tales or, yeah. or crumbs yeah, every time they it's say yeah. crumb, i think of i think of the witch picture and yeah exactly well and that was that's what they did that's yeah how you know the, it's branding honestly it's just <laughs> branding and uh and somebody along the way decided to invalidate the older woman i don't know if it was an intimidation thing or what it may have been but in the, it's not their fault it's on us to take it back yes it's yes. on us to take it back yes and we're rebranding and even you know i see that you know when you look at hollywood people are getting older and fabulous and and it's like oh wow like they're redefining being older but when you think about it still they have to look a certain way mm-hmm. in order to be appreciated They've got to look the best older that they can possibly be like a face of a 20 year old with maybe some gray hair, you know, and that's not, that's not owning it either. No. Allowing yourself to age, you know, I'm not saying let yourself go. You feel beautiful to you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we have this one chicken. I'm going to take it back to the chicken. (laughs) Barbara Barbara has met Ginger. And Ginger is, she's a crossbeak chicken. So her beak is, is different than most chickens. Uh, She was molting, has lost most of her feathers off her back, some off of her little elbow parts of her wings. Her tail, instead of being a beautiful chicken tail, it's like just spikes with no feather on them. It's like maybe three. (laughs) Yeah. And her neck, there's, feathers missing off her neck and I, I nearly I, if I'd had my phone the other day I caught a picture of her where it'd been that perfect picture of oh it was a hard day at the office type <laughs> you know those that you see on the internet but I want to tell you the roosters think she's the hottest thing on the planet and she and she struts her stuff she struts her she stuff. struts her stuff yeah and she'll come up and she'll just talk to keith i keep telling keith she's waiting for me to not come home someday so that she can move in to because <laughs> he thinks she likes him <laughs> so she's got a crush on you but i think too remember back well you know none of us remember back but think about the old westerns when the little guy with the rattly cart comes through and gives people a mirror before mm-hmm. that, you saw your face occasionally in a pond, in a, mm-hmm. in a rarely in a river because it moves, but in a pond, and that's all you saw. So you didn't know if your hair was messed up. You didn't know if your eyes were crooked or your lips were skinny or full or whatever. And so everybody was able to have their own self-worth mm. because you were treated by what was inside. 
I mean, yeah. yes, there's always the visual, especially from other people. But, you know, if you were kind, people treated you kindly. Therefore, you felt beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something we need to get back to is be, being kind and treating people well so that we do feel desired and beautiful for our heart. Mm, I love that so much. I love that because it's true. I, you know, so I am a long time observer of human behavior always have. I was a science major and then later became a behavior analyst. Right. So I'm always (laughs) watching. And when you watch the world, the people who are meeting the societal norms, they're, you know, doing the hair the certain way, doing the makeup, they get treated better. Mm -hmm. They get treated better by the community. And I've actually done it as a, as a kind of an unofficial study for myself and paid attention to how do I get treated going out when I don't wear makeup versus how do I get treated when I do? And, um, and you know, you can't, it's, that's why it's an unofficial study. Cause sometimes you have to like, make sure you're still owning it and make sure you're not behaving yeah. like, Oh my God, I don't have makeup on, Yeah, but, you know, that's doing your right. best to, to still have that same, you know, yes, personality, that same bravado really. And uh, there is a difference. Yes. And back when I had my modeling agency and most of our viewers know that I, I come out of the model and talent, model and talent industry. And when I was working with my girls I, and I had a large agency for many years, but I was a teaching agency and I didn't make them, you know, lose the weight. I mean, we, I I took a whole different thing of let's build up the inside, watch our nutrition, everything else will fall into place. And anyway, and one of our rules is you did not have on our models West t-shirt with a pair of jeans. It was black slacks or black, black jeans were fine as long as Mm -hmm. they were black. And if you stop and think, and they were going, why, what's the difference? And I'd pull two girls out of the, out of the group and I'd stand them up and I'd say, okay, which one looks better? Which one looks more put together and more Mm -hmm. acceptable as far as upping the scale a little bit. And Mm -hmm. it's amazing, you know, and I mean, I'm in Texas, you know, we have Texas tuxedos and those are blue jeans and a Mm -hmm. tuxedo jacket and there is nothing hotter. Okay. (laughs) Nothing on the planet hotter than a Texas tuxedo. But when you're just out in public and you want to put on a, a good face for lack of a better term, you want to look your best or you are representing someone else Jeans are not the option. And that goes into the societal norms, but it also goes into how do you want to be treated? You know, you, you look, you go, you know, you don't wear a skimpy bikini at the office water cooler. Yeah. I mean, people are going to wonder, but you know, it, it's, unless you work at the Playboy Mansion, maybe, but you know, it, you, you, you want to look your best, but you don't want to rely on that it's got to come from the inside it's got to be it's got to flow out but if you feel good about yourself you're going to want to put on a good outside Mm -hmm. too and but you can't you can't just do the outside oh that what is that movie uh what is that movie where the guy was all of a sudden seeing he he saw people inside and his girlfriend was Cameron Diaz just mm. drop dead gorgeous mm. but then one day she threw her panties at him and they were this wide yeah. uh, oh shallow it, howl yeah. or something shallow like how shallow how yes. that was it yes. that was it best yeah. show on the planet for showing people's heart and all the beautiful girls that were just witches just yeah ugly and right. horrible yeah. inside and so you know who would who would you want to spend your life with who want who do you want to spend your days with whether it's work best friend uh you know marriage you want to spend somebody that has a heart and that has mm-hmm. your same values and same goals and desires yes so this is second half of your life so i guess most of us have gotten to that part of it except barbara she's looking for a husband guys so if you know anybody <laughs> send them her way <laughs> the but one with a good heart yeah one with a good heart. good heart and a harley trike <laughs> the thing is though 
one of the things that I have found is that because now I'm starting to work with um, people that are coming up to retirement and they have no idea of who they are outside of their title. Yeah. Huge issue. And so many people have fallen into a job or a family business or uh, something in their 20s and early 30s. And now it's 25 years later. They've hated it for 25 years and they're still stuck in it. Well, you know, you know also this think about cool. the moms that that started raising children and their yeah. children are spread out and they didn't hate it, but all of a sudden their kids are gone. They're gone. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes yeah. their husband's gone. Yes. For whatever reason. And well, and, and I have a, a pretty extreme story of a family member who she raised seven children and they all, you know, grew and left, flew the nest. And then the husband was the last one she was taking care of. And he went in for like a very minor surgery and ended up dying in the hospital from it and was very unexpected. And um, no, she had no identity, none. Mm -hmm. And she right. just quite literally laid there and died. She oh. just laid, she stopped moving. She stopped talking. She stopped everything. I mean, to, one son had to come move in and just keep rolling her side to side so she wouldn't get bed sores. And she essentially, yeah. I mean, she essentially killed herself. Just yeah. let herself go until her entire body. There was she nothing had physically wrong. But and she think, had no of, all, purpose think of all the treasures that died with her. Yes. See, yes. that's the thing. The all the wisdom that dried yes. with yes. her. Yes. All yes. Wisdom. Nuggets. And I think that's why I'm so, I always, I call it the gap. That space between where you are and where you want to be. And that's where most of living happens. And so you've got to always be happy in the gap, right? Not like I'll deal with this for 25 years, but I'll be happy when I retire. No, right. you got to be happy no. now. And I think that is going to be a big I think phase, uh, I don't even know the word I'm trying to think of, like just a big push into that later life mm -hmm. for a lot of the people yeah. now. Yes. As they're learning this now and experiencing this, it, I don't need to be miserable and I can start learning now how to prioritize right. me and find joy in my life. So then it's just old hat, you know, by the time you get to those years, you don't have to relearn how to be happy. Well, and it's called right. truly in the journey, you know, yes. and, and yes. we talk a lot, Barbara and I do on our thought, our Monday motivation is be grateful. That's a, mm -hmm. if you are not happy where you are, be grateful. You can find something every single day to be grateful for. Grateful that you, you are can breathe. Always, grateful the you are sun always can. ahead of something, of some point in your life. You're always ahead of that. Like, oh God, remember when I only made that much money? Woo, I'm grateful yeah. today. Or, oh man, remember when I was living like this? Woo, yes. you know, there's so yeah. many, every day there's something. Well, and even if you're at the very bottom of where you've mm -hmm. ever been or plan to be or whatever, even if you're- But there's the something bottom, there. You're better than somebody. You're better, yeah, I don't mean better than somebody, but you're yeah. better off than somebody. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a friend on Sanibel Island They've lost mm -hmm. everything, their business and their house. Their business is being cleaned right now and they'll be able to open next week. He was a doctor. Oh, their house, the bones are there, but they're having to read. I mean, landscaping inside out, everything redone. Yeah. And, and I mean, they had to be helicoptered off the island. And That's so, I mean, if, if you don't have anything that you can be grateful for today, be grateful that you were helicoptered out of your house today. Yeah. With no place yes. to go. I mean, they've gone from this big, beautiful, fabulous house to mm -hmm. they are staying in one of their staff members' bedrooms. I mean, and she's so grateful that they have great. staff who love them and are yes. willing to do that. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Because and that's why I always say guys. everything is happening for you, not to you. And there's times yeah. where it's like, 
you've really got to have faith. <laughs> it's like, exactly. okay, I get it's happening for me. I don't understand it yet, but I'm going to trust. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Because, you know, if you're, if you're following hard after God, he is going to make sure everything turns out for your good. It may look bad. I mean, it may look. And sometimes bad. it feels bad, but that's yeah. part of the yeah. That's part of the journey. That's part of the learning process. But ultimately, in the end, it will turn for good. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, yeah. in the end, you know. And if you're if you're if you about the politics right now, it's gonna work out. So if anybody out there that's really struggling with that, it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. We we've we've been a country for over two hundred and fifty years. The world mm -hmm. has been around for six thousand years. Well, it's been around mm -hmm. longer than that. But you know, our civilization civilization's been here for six thousand years. It's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, life will go on. Yes. So, yeah. You know, but be grateful. But one one of the things that we're we're running out, uh, running out of time. But one of the things that Kalu, I think, just that I just totally agree is that has more and more people like us, the three of us, yeah. are stepping out and teaching, yeah. having shows like this. This is where there that mm -hmm. are not where we are. Exactly. Exactly. Start with one step. Start with yeah. just one thing. Learn one new thing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and just, and listen to teaching, get a coach, whatever it is to get you going. Because yes. you don't have to, you don't have to fold up your tents and die. Yes. You know, I love, um, women are doing somebody I worked with would always say the four most dangerous words are, I already know that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that and I can't. To me, I told my, my boys growing up, can't is a cuss word. It's a yes. cuss word. You're not using it. I've done a whole thing on that, too. Just having worked with children, mm -hmm. um, you know, teaching dance and up to the age of four, anything you say, they'll try. Right. And they'll twirl around and it doesn't matter how they look. They're just like, la, 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 la. You know? but right at five, they're like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I would, you know, we're doing a little pirouette. I'm like, okay, can you go back into fourth position? Okay. Can you come up into relevate? Okay. This time, can you spin just a quarter turn to face that wall? Yeah. Okay. Now can you go this way? Now, you know, I would just step by step. And then all of a sudden they do a whole pirouette and I'm like, but you told me that you can't. And they're like, <laughs> yes, exactly. And you can, exactly. you absolutely can. Now, maybe you're not going to be a prima the first time you try it, but that's right. part of the human experience is learning. Right. Yeah. And you might flub up. I uh, will. I have <laughs> been a, a one time, uh, I was doing a presentation in front of like 200 people, front rows. Because I got to one part of the presentation, I looked at him and said, David, what am I trying to say here? But and because he had heard me practicing it, he said, Well, this is what this is what's next. Oh, thanks, honey. And I went on. You know? Yeah, but have, you just own it and you go on. But you just and own people, it. And people, went on. If, if you freak out, leave the stage, everybody's gonna remember that. But if yes. you flub up, stop, compose yourself, and continue on, nobody's gonna remember. Because they're going to come up to you afterwards and say, I am so, so grateful that thank you so much because yes. I have been so afraid to stand up in front of an audience because I was afraid of flubbing up. I uh -huh. said, oh, welcome to my world. You're going to flub up <laughs> and you just laugh it off and go on. Yeah. You oh, will okay, fall down and laugh, but get and up. Watch me do it. Off. Watch yeah. me do it. Just yeah. I mean, I've done that on. where yeah, I'm very comfortable in small groups. But then when you get into a much bigger group, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> and so I was giving a presentation at a very large group and I went out there and I was like, all right, I'm just going to put it out here now. I get really, I'll be okay. But you just own it and then exactly. it's relatable anyway, because other people are like, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. Uh, Kalua, you've brought so much wisdom to our group. Oh, thank thank you. you. I appreciate it. And we're going to have to have you back again. Uh, 
guys, if you want to talk to Kalua more about what she does and how she does it, put it in the chat. Remember, Barbara has a class starting this month about uh, your transformation of your brain and, and the things that hold you back. I mean, getting in touch with all of those voices that are telling you you're not enough. Yes. And, and she'll, she'll name them and help you kick them out the door. So put it in there in the chat if you want to uh, get in there. So anyway, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>